What's up, friends? Welcome back to the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Pack a Day Podcast. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you have not already. That would be freaking awesome. Either way, appreciate you being here. Always love chatting Packers with you guys. Before we get into today's topic, we did have some news from Friday. I'm getting all messed up with my days coming off of Thanksgiving and everything. But from Friday, we had a injury update, some practice updates, but we also had a suspension for the Packers, which obviously is not ideal. Uh, Sean Ryan was suspended six games for performance enhancing drugs. Just when you thought third round picks could not find a way to disappoint you anymore in Green Bay, Sean Ryan said, hold my beer. A massively, massively disappointing season for Sean Ryan, a top 100 pick, a player whose tape uh, at UCLA looked pretty darn impressive, uh, had the versatility of playing guard and center in college, and looked like somebody who legitimately would have a chance to compete with Royce Newman and, uh, you know, uh, Jake Hansen and some of those guys inside while well, Jenkins and Bakhtiari recovered from injury. And that just never materialized, never happened, did not look ready to play in training camp at family night and preseason, etc. cetera. Looked like this was going to be, uh, unfortunately have to be a true redshirt season uh, for Sean Ryan. Zach Tom very quickly passed him up despite being drafted, uh, you know, a couple rounds later uh, than what Sean Ryan was. So uh, all the way around, it was already a pretty disappointing season. Ryan played all of one one snap, which was on special teams, did not play any offensive snaps, was very rarely actually even active on game days. And then he get the, you know, the kicker is he gets suspended for six games to end his season, uh, you know, unless Green Bay makes the playoffs, in which case it doesn't even matter because it's not like Sean Ryan's going to be playing in those games anyway. So a complete and total lost season in so many different ways for Sean Ryan. So he has a big, steep climb ahead of him. Listen, they just cut a third round pick in year two this year in Amari Rogers. Sean Ryan, there, there's nothing guaranteed for him, especially coming off a season in which he did not look ready to play. He did not look uh, confident when he was out, again, on the practice field in, in training camp and in, in mini camps and in, in preseason, et cetera. Could not break uh, the the lineup, uh, you know, on offense certainly. Very much struggled to actually get active on game days, and now is having a six game suspension for PEDs. It's just all the way bad. And yes, the third round curse continues for Green Bay, and it's, it's going to be really tough to bounce back from this for Sean Ryan. I'm hoping he can. Like I said, I loved his tape coming out of college. Certainly looked like a player who's going to be able to help in some regard sooner rather than later. Instead, like I said, a completely lost season for Sean Ryan. So we got all, we saw all of one special team snap from Sean Ryan in 2022. So massively, massively disappointing. Injury report, uh, for, first of all, from practice, uh, Romeo Dobbs was the only player not to practice. So uh, great there for Green Bay that some of these guys are at least getting back to practice. The big one there was Devondre Campbell, who returned to practice. However, when the injury report came out, Romeo Dobbs officially listed as out. Devondre Campbell is doubtful. So I would not expect him, even though he got a, a little bit of time on practice on Friday, would not expect him to go in Philadelphia on Sunday, especially with that doubtful designation. And then questionable uh, was Shamar John Charles and David Bakhtiari. Bakhtiari practiced again, so my assumption would be that he will play. SJC, we'll have to wait and see if they actually activate him. It's not like he is a core member of this team in any capacity, so if he's still fighting through some things, they could just give him another week just to be extra cautious. Uh, or if he's ready to go and he did practice all week, then maybe uh, they allow him to you know, get back, start playing on special teams, and maybe get back in the conversation as you know uh, a dime corner, things like that. So we will see what happens with SJC, but it would seem that Shamar is probably the only guy that we're really, you know, waiting on to see if he's actually active from the injury list. With Dobbs out, Devondre, I'd be shocked if he played, and Bakhtiari, I'd be pretty surprised if he didn't play. And again, that just leaves SJC as kind of the real question mark here. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia Eagles have no injury status on their injury report. So uh, the best team in the NFC, not really fighting many injuries. I know Dallas Goddard not going to be able to play in this game. And uh, obviously both teams have players on IR, but when it comes to true injury designations, none for the Eagles this week, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. All right, quick topic today. I don't think I'm going to take too much of your time, which is usually the running joke because usually I find ways to ramble on for 30 more minutes. But uh, like I said, I think this is going to be a quick, simple one today. With all of the 
you know, disappointment and what can sometimes feel like negativity that's just surrounding this team right now, I wanted to take a moment to go through and look at my grades and see, all right, who are some players that are trending in the right direction, uh, you know, over the course of the last month or so. And I didn't always use the same time frame for everyone, but wanted to get an idea of who's trending up. I am going to go who's trending down as well. So there's going to be, you know, some uh, non-bright sides in this episode, but I wanted to at least, that my, my main intention and my main goal was to go through and see, all right, well, who's, you know, I know it's been a, a rough stretch, but who's actually playing well over the course of the last month. So I have five players who are trending in the right direction, five players who are trending in the wrong direction. Let's start positive because why not? So number one on my list of players who are trending in the right direction, this is not a player who was struggling and is now all of a sudden playing well. This is a player who was playing well and now is still playing well, but they're still trending up and that's Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones in his first seven games of the season had a plus 2.45 grade. In his last four games of the season, a plus 2.5 grade. So a slightly better grade over his last four games combined than his first seven games combined. So even though, uh, again, it's been a little bit of a rough stretch, Aaron Jones continues to perform at an extremely high level. He continues to make people miss in the backfield, even when the blocking isn't perfectly there for that, for him. He, he you know, continues to find ways to get positive yardage, almost always falls forward. It's just been a, another joy of a season to watch Aaron Jones play football. One of the very few bright spots from week one until now. There have been a few fumbles, a couple of them he's been able to recover, uh, something he needs to make sure he still gets a little bit more under control. Uh, the one against Tampa almost proved extremely costly and could have cost them another win on the season, or I guess if you're looking at it the other way, may have given them another loss if, uh, if things went worse to uh, help that draft status. But I say that in jest. Overall, a fantastic season so far for Aaron Jones, and he continues to trend in the right direction. Next up, also with a plus 2.5 grade recently, is David Bakhtiari. First three weeks back from injury, a very slight negative 0.05 grade, basically a neutral grade. But you could tell some good stuff from Bakhtiari, some not so great stuff from Bakhtiari in those first three games, just getting his legs back, feeling things out. Pretty actually freaking incredible that after not playing basically for a season and a half, for you know almost two years in calendar time, that he had a very minimal, extremely minimal negative grade in his first three three weeks back coming back from injury, which is like I would argue a, a massive accomplishment and a massive win. But in the last five games, plus two point five, not first team All Pro caliber David Bakhtiari, anything like that but really sound, really strong football from the Packers' best offensive linemen, their left tackle, one of the leaders on this team, one of the best all-time offensive linemen in Packers franchise history. He's looked near himself uh, over the course of the last five games, and you just love seeing him trend in the right direction after battling through all these injuries. So first three weeks, negative 0.05, his last five games coming back from injury, plus 2.50. So definitely trending in the right direction for David Bakhtiari. Number three on the list, also a plus 2.5 grade recently. Uh, certainly a little bit of a trend here. And I'm just realizing we actually have six positives. So that's even better than five. All right. So Christian Watson, number three, uh, his first four games, negative 2.10. The biggest reason for that was, of course, the opening drop against the Minnesota Vikings, a huge negative grade on that play for obvious reasons, has the opportunity to get a walk-in touchdown, um, obviously did a great job of gaining separation on that play, but Rodgers could not have you know, handed it to him any better. He drops the ball, and it just felt like that was almost like a harbinger of things to come for the Packers this season, and it was. Uh, but in his last four games, plus 2.50. So fought through the injuries, fought through you know some drops early in the season, fought through some inconsistencies, negative 2.1 in his first four games, his last four games, plus 2.50. He still only played in eight games total. So uh, we're basically at the halfway point of a normal season for Christian Watson. And uh, his last four games of that halfway point, basically the second quarter of his career, extremely promising. I don't need to tell you the accolades that he's, you know, racked up, especially over the course of the last couple of weeks, but uh, a player that is not only trending in the right direction, but as I mentioned before, the right player with the right skill set, with the right playmaking ability, the exact player that this team and this offense needed uh, to have step up. He has stepped up in a major way and hopefully he can continue that trend moving forward. 
Next on my list, uh, the fourth player trending in the positive is Aaron Rodgers. And this may become uh, a little bit of a, uh, may come as a little bit of a surprise because in that last four games, there's the Detroit game, which he was absolutely abysmal. And the second half against the Titans, he was really, really bad. But the Buffalo game, uh, not his fault. I know a lot of the, the the stuff that he did was in sort of like non-pressure situations because they were losing by a bunch and, you know, it, whatever. But it, I would look back at that game and argue that that loss was not on Aaron. Uh, they, A, just played a much better team on the road and, and B, like Rodgers did what he could in that game based on the game plan that was called. So, uh, I thought he actually played well in that game. He played fantastic in the Dallas game, played really well in the first half of the Titans game, second half, not so much. So I'm not talking like return of the MVP Aaron Rodgers over the last four weeks, but in his first seven games, negative 2.75 grade in his last four games, plus 2.35. So a little bit more Aaron Rodgers-esque over that time. Like I said, the, the, the Lions game was still abysmal. The second half against the Titans was really rough, uh, but there was actually some really good Aaron Rodgers stuff mixed in there. Uh, and it sort of coincided with, you know, no no surprise, no shock here, uh, Bakhtiari and Jenkins playing better, Christian Watson stepping up at wide receiver, Aaron Jones still playing incredibly well. So, you know, some of those players around him playing a bit better, getting a little bit better protection from the offensive line uh, resulted in him, you know, having some opportunities to be a bit more successful. And he was overall, even though there were certainly some hiccups during that four, you know, those last four games. Next is Elton Jenkins. His first six weeks back from injury, negative 5.2 grade, greater than the negative in every single one of those games. Was playing right tackle for five of those six, you know, then made the move back to left guard. Uh, did not look like himself. And you could tell the footwork wasn't there. His ability to anchor wasn't there. Didn't look comfortable at right tackle. Even his first game back at left guard, which I'm sure was also a transition, didn't totally look like himself. Negative 5.2 in his first six games back. Since then, his last three weeks, plus 1.25. Again, not Pro Bowl caliber Elton Jenkins here or anything, but graded in the positive in every game over the last three weeks after grading the negative in every game for the first six weeks. You can see things coming back. His his run blocking came back first. I thought this past week against the Titans was his best game as a pass protector this season. You can see him gaining a little bit more confidence, and that is going to be ultra important for Elton Jenkins moving forward. Again, you love seeing him on this list of players trending in the right direction. And then last but not least, the only defender on the list that's trending up is Razul Douglas. Not like Rudy Ford has played well since coming in, but he didn't really have like a counterbalance to that. So like Rudy Ford has uh, played pretty positive since obviously coming back. So you could kind of put him in this list as well, though his last game was by far and away his worst game against the Titans. So, uh, but still certainly worthy of, I guess, you know, trending in the right direction overall. But Razul Douglas, first eight weeks, negative 2.0 grade, last three weeks, plus 1.15. So much, much better for Razul. A lot of that, of course, goes without saying, move back to the outside, right? You have the injury to Eric Stokes, Razul moves outside, Darnell moves in the slot, and Razul is kind of the benefactor there where he gets to go back to the spot where he feels really comfortable playing, and he's just looked so much better back at that spot. So negative two over the, la the first eight weeks, plus 1.15 over the last three weeks. So those are the players trending in the right direction. Aaron Jones, David Bakhtiari, Christian Watson, Aaron Rodgers, Elton Jenkins, and Razul Douglas. All right, now some players trending in the wrong direction. Uh, number one on my list, and I'm going to go in kind of reverse order, so not quite as bad to some of the ones that have been a little bit more abysmal. Alan Lazard, prior to his injury, remember he went out for a couple weeks with an injury, prior to his injury, plus 1.85 grade, since coming back from his injury, negative 0.9 grade. So definitely a swing there. You, ha you can tell he hasn't quite been the same since coming back from injury. It still made some nice plays. I'm not saying it's been brutal. Negative 0.9 is not anything that we're like, holy cow, he's playing terrible. Uh, but it's definitely been a, a change in a player who almost always grades in the positive over the last you know year and a half, two years-ish. Um, seeing him grade in the negative since coming back from injury would lead me to lead me to believe maybe he's not quite 100% is maybe fighting through some things. Hopefully it just turns around and we start seeing some real positives from Al Lazard. You know, not having a Devonte Adams has certainly affected him as well. Uh, but I still think there's a lot, you know, better football ahead for Alan Lazard than what he's shown since coming back from that injury. 
AJ Dillon, first five games, plus 1.75 grade, last six games, negative 1.7. It's been tough sledding for AJ Dillon. Hasn't been able to get much going. He's had a couple nice runs on the interior, but again, I talked about it yesterday, just a player that really lacks explosivity and just a, a player that hasn't been able to get much going. You know, a couple nice catches out of the backfield here and there, a couple nice plays in between the tackles, but overall, he's sort of getting what's blocked for him. Uh, had a really costly fumble in there as well. So uh, overall, just hasn't been uh, quite as effective over the last six weeks. So again, first five games plus 1.75, last six negative 1.7. Preston Smith did not exactly start out the season gangbusters, but over the last four weeks, negative 1.85 grade. I thought he had a decent start to the season, kind of neutral, uh, but overall wasn't too disappointed with what you know Preston was putting out on tape. I thought the last four weeks he struggled a lot more. A lot of that coinciding with Rashawn Gary being out, which puts more pressure on Preston Smith, uh, a few more eyeballs, and it just makes things a lot more difficult, right? So, uh, But they need him to play better, especially with Rashawn Gary out. You can kind of sense it against the Titans game where this is just a team that was really struggling, um, you know, to get any pressure. They need more from Preston Smith. And if they don't get it, it's going to be extremely difficult to generate pressure against teams moving forward this season with Rashawn Gary out. Next on my list uh, is Kenny Clark. And I'm just realizing I've got six negatives as well. So counting, not my forte today. So six positives, six negatives. Number four on my list of negatives, Kenny Clark, first seven weeks, plus 5.25 grade. Last four weeks, negative 2.05. Once again, coinciding a lot of this with Rashawn Gary going out. He's seen a lot of double teams during this time. It's been difficult for him to get going. But as I've mentioned before, even when he's been single teamed, even when he's had the opportunity to make an impact, he hasn't been able to do so more often than not. Had a couple nice plays against the Titans where he was able to kind of bench press players into the backfield, but hasn't been anywhere near with the consistency that he showed earlier in the season. Kind of the same as Preston Smith with Rashawn Gary being out. The burden goes on guys like Kenny Clark and Preston Smith, and those guys just have to step up. Unfortunately, it's been the opposite for both of them. Uh, not only have they not stepped up, they've actually both taken a step back, and it's really, really hurting the Packers defense right now. And then the last two will come as no surprise to anyone. Sammy Watkins over his last four games, negative 3.90 grade, just really, really tough. And yes, also fighting back from an injury and through some injuries, his hamstring, uh, you know, he, he missed some games there, but man, his, his route running has been poor. He's been running wrong routes. Uh, you know, he had some drops here and there, just complete inconsistency. He has no juice as a playmaker right now, nothing after the catch. It's just been a really tough stretch. And again, I struggle to feel like this, you know, there's a, a positive left for Sammy Watkins. It just feels like Torre and Dobbs when he's back and Watson and all the young guys should get as many snaps as possible. And it just feels like it's time to kind of stop the uh, Christian Watkins, or excuse me, the Sammy Watkins 2022 experiment that just has gone extremely poorly. And then last but not least, Darnell Savage, last four weeks in abysmal negative 4.95 grade, starting off with some really poor play at safety, then making the transition to slot corner. I've mentioned it. He looks more confident playing slot corner. That has not turned into results. He's still struggling with coverage, uh, still struggling with communication on the back end. And it's just something that he, like I've said it a couple of times now, he's just not a starting caliber football player. And you, you're, you're struggling to win with him in the lineup, period. And there, there's just, there's nothing you can point to for Darnell Savage. He's not a good tackler. He's not good in coverage. He's not good in man. He's not good in zone. You know, he's not a good blitzer. Like there's nothing you can point to with Darnell Savage. He takes poor angles. You can't play him center field. You can't play him slot. You can't play him as a box safety. You can, he kind of does okay as a robber from time to time, but like you can't just play a robber on every play. So like there's just nothing there uh, that would lead you to believe that Darnell Savage is going to be a competent NFL starter and is going to bring something to the table for you. That sucks because he had all the talent in the world coming out of college, looked like he was going to have the ability to be a real playmaker after his first couple seasons. Last year and this year have been awful, and it's been trending even more in the wrong direction, even though he's made that switch to the slot. Maybe with a little bit more time in the slot, he can maybe pick up a little bit more nuance there, but uh, it, so far the results have not been promising. So the six that are trending in the wrong direction, Alan Lazard, AJ Dillon, Preston Smith, Kenny Clark, Sammy Watkins, and Darnell Savage. That is going to do it for me today. Still ended up talking 20 minutes. I can't help myself. I appreciate you guys always for listening. I'll be right back here tomorrow uh, to do the preview for the Packers and the Eagles. So make sure to check that out. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.